Hi everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me without the microphones also. Can you hear me? Also in the last rows. Okay, great. Yeah. No, I don't need it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Mo, and this is Simon. We will do the talk uh, together, and we will talk about augment reality and about one specific SDK we have. Will work? The laptop here a little bit. Okay. This is we bought two, and we start the whole project in 2007 with the ideas to bring something in augmented reality. There, at that time, there was no MOMAI. Then we come with the first uh, SDK out in 2009, and then we go as an open source project. And yeah, it's still working, and we were first at a university. He was one uh, student of me, and I was a PhD student at that time. And then we go on and go on, and now we have a startup built out, uh, which is partly financed by the state uh, of Germany. Um, if you're interested in a topic, you can find also about augment reality, about the coding, which also other SDKs are out there. In the little book you've got in the morning, I think, there's also the whole chapter which we have written for the mobile developer's guide. Also, you will find that uh, book and chapter online. If you Google for uh, mobile developer's guide to the galaxy, there will be yeah, the PDF of that book. And then you can get more information, more details about the whole ecosystem around augmented reality at the moment. So we had this um, SDK build, which is at the moment used by 5,000 developers worldwide. And um, we just uh, very, we are concentrating on movement in augmented reality. With the most SDKs you have, you just uh, can take your phone and just look around and see like with GPS from Wikitude or Layer, some landmarks which are built in, or you can hold it down of a magazine or something, then you see some augment reality object. What we want to do is that we can go out and have the movement. And this is with, with what we are concentrating on. And this is the, what is different between the other SDKs out there. Um, we can show you some videos. That are some of the demo projects we already created. And this is about ghost hunting. So you will see some ghosts around, and then you can go out and then um, kill these ghosts. The important thing is, okay, you take your phone and you can watch and see some ghosts around you. They have different colors. But then you have to do some different magic stuff. If you just kill and move your hands, then you can cut someone, and which you have then to jump around with your phone, <coughs> and then some of them get killed. So this is a much more about the sensors you have built in your phone, and then the movement. And this is also, you don't need to look into your phone at the moment of the killing. It was very important because the user don't want to see it, look through it, and it's very difficult to do it at the moment, as you don't have the glasses. So you then have to think about much more interactions you can have in the, in, in the augment reality, so just jumping around or some other movement, which you then not need. This is about another game. It's called Color Fit. It's more like a mathematical game. You have the squares which you see, and they have different colors. And you have to find the right path through those colors. And if you go over those, then they will change their colors. And you, you can take your phone out, look at those, and go around. This is another game. Code are airbots. It's a little, a little bit. Like StarCraft, you have some different robots which are flying around you, and you have other robots 
which will fight against you, and you have to go with your robots to a kind of portal which is near, and then you can go around, see your robots, click on them, send them to the others, and fight, you have a health spot, and so on, and you have to get to this uh, portal which you see there. And this was built, I think, one and a half year ago, so it was been one of the first demonstrations. This is a little <coughs> bit new for six, seven months ago, and this is an augmented reality jump and run. Also, where you have, um, where you can create your own game first, somewhere, and then give it to someone else, or yourself can go out and play this. And it's not just only um, GPS based. You have also built in step detection and so on, so that you're much more on the point because the GPS don't work so very well because it goes around between 10 to 30 meters. And therefore you have to go and take new algorithm um, to use so that you can have um, step detection. Questions until now, or comments? It could be really interactive, the session. Nobody? Okay, you're shy. Um, this was some projects we have done uh, with our SDK, and this is what you can also go. The first version um, is out there on GitHub. We can use it, change it. It's a whole open source project. And now we are going uh, on. I have built a second version, which makes it much easier to build uh, games with it. So the problem was that we were out there and saw, okay, so many people are using it, and it was the idea, okay, that developers pay something if they go for commercial, and we meet a lot of people who use our first SDK for commercial stuff also, and they never called us or said, okay. But, okay, and now we have built a second version, which is at the moment uh, still not uh, open source or out there, but if you call us and then we can uh, talk about it. And Simon will go on and talk about uh, the features and of the second version of the SDK and how you can go on and build your own apps. Or have you questions? Or what do you, if it's, is there something special you want to know? Or are you just sitting here because the room is cold and cozy? And it has great Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, nobody's on the phone, and they are still awake, a lot of them. Hmm, okay, just go on. <laughs> okay, yeah, I will introduce the second version. So, for example, we exchanged the complete rendering engine. We, in the first version, we did all that on our own, just a small, easy wrapper around OpenGL1. And now we removed this. Uh, we exchanged it against the JMonkey engine, maybe some of you know it a really big open source uh, game engine, which is also cross-platform, has features like um, yeah, 3D physics and, and all that built in, comparable to Unity or anything else like this. And I will also go to the new uh, vision stuff, for example, and the composition system, which combines the computer vision algorithms with the already built in step detection and uh, localization methods we, we used also in version one. So, yeah, first a little bit about JMonkey and its power. And as I already said, it's open source, it's cross-platform, and um, it's developed since 2003. So there's already a lot of effort put into this. And there are also a lot of commercial games out there which use this engine. So we thought it would be a good first SDK to, to support especially because it's open source, so we could uh, yeah, tear it open and, and implement our own uh, logic behind that to, for example, allow, as you can see down here, the, to, to display the, the camera image behind it and do the computer vision stuff. And also we added a third layer in front of the, the game layer, the game engine layer, which then can be, uh, yeah, you can add any type of uh, standard Android UI in front of this. This is also a similar concept to the first version of the Droidar framework. Um, we also had this composite layer system. Yeah, um, 
the, the great thing about JMonkey is that now you as a developer can, can develop your application or especially your game uh, in JMonkey, test it completely on your computer, and when it's done and it all works, you just pass it on to JMonkey. I also prepared a small slide on this. So you, you develop your, your application. Basically, you can any type of uh, application, you can do it in JMonkey. And then if you're done and you tested it on your testing machine, so this allows very small iteration cycles and very fast testing. And when you're done, you just pass it over to, to the Droid R framework, basically, and um, yeah, add some uh, connection to the, to the Android-specific stuff, like, for example, if you want to import some images you took with your phone or, or just a basic object loader, so to, to load objects. I can uh, show you some pictures later. Uh, there, there are some, still some, some inter uh, interfaces needed with the, the Android-specific stuff, so we also thought of this to connect uh, these two, uh, two concepts of JMonkey and Android. And yeah, then you, you just pass it on to DroidR. And here's a small example. So as a developer, for example, you're in your own application, which displays, I don't know, a route from A to B to, your, to, to the next, uh, I don't know, Pizza Hut, whatever. And um, you want to also provide a, a, a way for the user to display that route, not only on the Google Maps, but also on, on, uh, in this augmented reality view then you can just uh, implement our, our SDK uh, and uh, use basically just this line to, to start this AR view from your, uh, from your current activity. And then it, uh, you can have this, this RR setup which connects basically the, the Android stuff with the JMonkey stuff. So here you can add your own implementation I used for this demo here. I use the default one, which, for example, displays a map so that the user can select the, the first position when he launches the, the application. So this, this position, if it's not uh, detected correctly by GPS or the, the accuracy of the first position is not high enough, there's always some delay. And if the user don't want to wait, he just presses uh, the correct position on the map and uh, continues. Uh, yeah, we also added some error reports and that's basically one small uh, interface here for the Android UI you can put on top of the uh, JMonkey layer. So for example, a small close button I just implemented here, but you also can get the JMonkey connection and go down to the JMonkey implementation and this way connect your application with the code you wrote in the JMonkey SDK. Yeah, that's one example application I yesterday, I, I created a small, um, it's just a basic object loader, so you, you create your 3D model, you put it on your SD card, and you can uh, then load it in the, in the RR application. And for example, I did this screenshot just some, some minutes ago. So you can, as for example, as an arch architect, you can load your model you want to show to the, to the customer, that's how your house will look like. Uh, maybe not that, but <laughs> you get the idea. Or do you just uh, look at your uh, um, IKEA catalog and you want to display the latest uh, billboard in there, and you just take it, pull it out, and put it on the wand on the right on the uh, on the on the wall on the correct place, and see if it yeah looks correctly and and fits your other furniture. Yeah, that that's uh, just one example you can create with with uh, the the SDK. And um, to the computer vision stuff behind that, we um, really realized with all the testing that for really many scenarios, this is, it's not uh, enough to rely com uh, only on the, on the sensors. Step detection and stuff like this can do a lot. And also Wi-Fi positioning is quite OK for maybe five meter accuracy. But if you want to do um, yeah, scenarios like this IKEA catalog, that the user really can go around his furniture and it should look like it's really there. Then you need things like SLAM, which is basically you take the features out of the image, you map them in 3D, so a 3D point, uh, point cloud is created, and then the uh, camera can be calculated where it is in, the, in this virtual scene. That, so it's, it's basically centimeter accurate, 
and you can uh, combine this with the other sensors. So um, we uh, did some, some testing already. This, this down here are some example uh, screens where you can see here is a basic cube we rendered. So we initialize the scene by just, maybe you tried out other applications. There, there are not very many out there which do this, but on, on the iPad I think there's already one which does a similar job, but only computer vision based. So it's basically you initialize the scene and then it tracks all these features you can then see down here. So this is a 3D point cloud. And um, yeah, basically you can then know where the scene is. You, for example, you developed your small uh, Plants vs. Zombies game or even better, uh, farm, Farmville maybe. So you have, have your Farmville game and here are some, some uh, your plates where you have to crop your, your, uh, your wheat or something like this. And uh, you can play this with, with other friends together. We also added some uh, multiplayer logic and also in JMonkey uh, is such logic already implemented. So you can reuse all that and uh, combine it with our SDK. And um, yeah, one other scenario we already uh, showed in another image. For example, if you want to do really um, correct uh, internet navigation, you, you can do this, of course, with step detection and Wi-Fi. But if you, for example, want to overlay the correct path to the, to the, to the location the user wants to go to, then you uh, still need things like uh, Vision Slam. And that's uh, why we added th these features. It's also very interesting, for example, for uh, interest industry proposals and uh, maybe if, uh, there. Okay, I will just skip to the next slide. There are the examples. Um, because you can do a lot of things uh, with this point cloud, which is uh, you're calculated. Because you not only get the correct uh, camera position, you only uh, you also get things like the information, what's the floor, where, where are the walls, where can I augment uh, information, for example, a floating Facebook wall on the, on the real wall, something like this. There, there were some example videos out there a while ago. And yeah, you can also do 3D object detection because you have these object features. So if you have a pre-known object like a printer, you can display or show the user exactly how he can exchange his printer uh, yeah, and and uh, things like that, or how to repair a car or whatever. And yeah, we focused on these mobile technologies because they are out there. So the users have smartphones now, and um, that's that's why we why we focused on especially Android first. And now we are also porting to iOS because that's why the user don't need any new hardware. He can use his current phone and. Uh, yeah, use all these features. And um, yeah, this, this object detection can also then be used, for example, for shadow casting of, of the virtual objects so that the augmentation gets even more real and a reconstruction of other, of other experience. Or just think of a 3D scanner you can, you can use with your phone. Of course, with, with only one camera, there's a lot of noise, so you will have to uh, take some time to uh, yeah, record the 3D object correctly, but it, uh, it works even, uh, and also if you combine it with the existing sensors, you even get better results. And that's why we, why we take this SLAM computer vision approach and combine it with our absolute positioning components because of course the, the um, computer vision uh, um, application uh, so the logic behind that it always uh, is only a local reference to the to the uh, real position of the user. So the, the computer vision, of course, do doesn't know where the user really is globally. It only has this local context where the user started, and that is why you have to combine it with other sensors like GPS, Wi-Fi, and uh, yeah, that's what we're currently implementing to create the first examples within also will we'll publish on our blog or in the market. And um, yeah, that's that what you can all uh, do with, with these new technologies we implemented. And um, yeah, small conclusion. Um, we have, for example, um, the high flexibility 
So um, th this new combination approach, which isn't done yet by any other of the SDKs, allows really many new scenarios. So it, it for the first time, yeah, makes it possible to, to for you developers create a more more realistic overlay and not just uh, maybe you, you don't have only the location based or only the computer vision based where you can augment some 2D images or anything. Now you can really place the objects where they are really located in the world and then you can create some awesome games or other application scenarios with that. Um, I think it's also a really good idea for from that that we changed this this rendering approach to a more um yeah developer friendly solution um so that we exchanged our own rendering engine with a more high level one and uh, we will also add other engines there so so for example add a unity support so that you can still continue to work with your existing knowledge about unity or maybe also jmonkey and test on the de development machines, and then just when you're done, uh, pass it on the on the uh, Android device and test it in augmented reality. And yeah, easy to use, of course. So we we add a lot of um, yeah reusable components for you, like the uh, the standard PoE browser scenario where you just want to display the locations you have in a, in a JSON object, and you just want to display them round and react maybe on, on clicks or things like this, or the um, standard uh, A to B principle, so, so the user wants to, is at a current location, wants to go somewhere, and you have to want to display him the correct path there, then we have a component ready for you to do this. And um, yeah, we also try to rely on this open source um, projects to to don't get this technology lock behind that. Yeah, I also listed some of the example scenarios like I already said. So this point of interest browsers, the games, yeah, navigation is also a very big um, field where where our framework comes in handy, and also this multiplayer scenarios where you, for example, meet with a friend and want to see where on the map he is. And then you can also switch to the augmented reality view and see where he is currently walking around, or maybe you can play some virtual soccer with him, or, or whatever. And yeah, in uh, tourist guides, for example, with with these instruction guides, um, there there can be also so so these are the possible customers for for our scenario, or even for you if you use our framework and build applications with these. For example, a tourist guide, which a virtual guide, which walks around with you and tells you, "Hey, this is uh, the Cologne C Cathedral," and uh, or education. We also built a um, um, cloud platform, so um, which specializes in this uh, location-based content, which you can create as a customer, uh, as a user, and and uh, also display then in our uh, SDK. And of course, the industry with, with all this, yeah, repair the machine, how to repair the machine, which machine is located where, how to get to the uh, correct um, yeah, billboard or anything like this, or to the correct floor, or where where is the office of XY located, things like this. And yeah, that that will be uh, become uh, possible very soon. Yeah, that's already it. I think I'm a little bit. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. Oh. <laughs>